exciting I information. I have to say I've not seen your podcast. No, 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 no. Well, you, you... Yeah, I don't even know where to find you. Where did I go? Acquia.com slash podcasts, Chris. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. module for that there of course there is DrupalCon Amsterdam 2014 mm. it's been a great conference for me I'm with Chris Jolly CTO of on track Europe who have a very exciting interesting uh, business that combines Drupal legacy systems lots of integrations it's great to see you Chris hi there I've been having a great week Chris Jolly CTO of on track from Augsburg right Right. How's your week so far? Been great. Yeah, been really nice. Uh, met a lot of new people, made some new friends, and uh, it's been great to finally see Beta come out for Dru for Drupal Eight. So it's been a very exciting week for us. Yeah. Are you feeling part of the Drupal community now? I know yes. this is your, at yeah. least your second Drupal event. That's correct. Yes. So uh, we come from the Symphony in the e-commerce world, and this is our. Uh, third year looking at Drupal and our second year doing Drupal. So, nice. Yeah. I was wondering, we've met before, but I never got the chance to ask you, how did you discover open source? What's your first m memory around open source? Yeah. It's uh, a very interesting question. Let me see. Well, okay, so I come from a traditional uh, C development background. Um, so we're talking back in the early 80s when I was a C engineer. Uh, I spent about 20 years doing something completely different and came back to software engineering around 10 years ago. Um, and at that point uh, we were doing C Sharp, .NET, um, so that's uh, not open source really. Um, and then I guess my first uh, interaction with open, open source was uh, when we came across WordPress and we did a very simple WordPress website. Um, so that's my first interaction with open source. We met at Drupal Camp Vienna right. at the end of 2013. That's right. And you were telling me, I can't wait for Drupal 8 to be usable because I do all these integrations, because I need to work with a PHP content management system, and because I never want to touch Typo 3 again as soon as I can find a viable alternative. That's Right. We have used a variety of CMS systems in the past. We've done integrations with uh, Type 3 and with WordPress. And to be honest, we were not really very excited by where they were going. Uh, we've also used Symfony for our own applications and for integration work. So when we saw that Drupal was going to use Symfony, that was a trigger for us to look at Drupal much more seriously. And uh, just before we came to that conference, we'd already made the decision to use Drupal pretty much. Uh, and uh, so we were very excited last year in Vienna to have it confirmed uh, what a great community and uh, the quality of the, t of, the uh, of the team and the software. So, um, and coming here this week has really just reinforced that it was a good decision. Well, I'm, I'm great. And you've got a Drupal 8 site running now. Well, we do. We have a, a Drupal 8 site in production. Um, the uh, site is for a German customer that makes cables and this site integrates uh, four uh, separate subdomains. It has a Drupal subdomain for the main corporate content for the front page. It has two Oxid e-commerce websites, one for B2C and one for B2B. And then it has a Symfony subdomain for single sign-on between Drupal and the e-commerce site. Fantastic. And how was it to build, uh, to build this with, with Drupal 8? Um, actually, it was uh, much more straightforward than we'd expected. Yeah, it was brilliant. Uh, because the way that the modules uh, in Drupal 8 are, are uh, constructed, the way of, of working via modules to the core, is for me as a Symfony developer, very straightforward. Very straightforward. It's like a slightly different dialect, right? But it, it feels like the same language, you know? 
So uh, it was uh, really good. And the cost for us, the, the new REST interface is fantastic too. So we use that as well. Yeah. I mean, if you go to the front page of this website, which is called summercable.com, so S-O-M-M-E-R, cable.com, you'll see on the, on the front page in the central area uh, is some information that's pulled out of the e-commerce website, some product information. And then we use the REST interface to go and grab that information. Perfect. So, uh, yeah. Um, I think uh, for us, um, our business is all about integrating with legacy systems, um, with uh, business customers, and I think for them, uh, you know, Drupal now offers a platform to build more complicated uh, websites. The, we, we don't really do the traditional pure corporate website, it's more about integration of services. And, so, for example, um, in our e-commerce, we integrate with legacy ERP systems, and I think bringing you know, a diverse set of systems and bringing information, displaying information, reusing business knowledge that's buried in another system and displaying it in Drupal, that's just the way to go forward, I think. Um, I think uh, it's uh, certainly Drupal 8, um, the approach that's been taken has been a, a very open approach. It's not been a, a, a narrow, narrowly defined approach. Um, I think embracing things like Symphony to remove the concerns about security, and let somebody else worry about the interface with the with the HTTP and so forth, and to really focus on what Drupal does well, which is to uh, manage content and to display content, um, and to open up the system so that people can use it in new and novel novel ways. I think that's the that's the great thing that I see going on. What are you most excited about in Drupal 8? That's very difficult. There's so many things, and in fact, uh, every time I speak to somebody here, it's like, oh goodness, that's yet another thing we could be doing. <laughs> uh, for example, I spent time this morning talking to the commerce guys um, about single sign-on because we do single sign-on, and their approach to single sign-on is very similar to mine. Um, so in the future, rather than just being a user, I'm intending to be a contributor because I, I, we will cooperate with them and try to try to bring the the uh, OAuth2 server client, uh, the um, Open uh, ID Connect, uh, work on those modules with them. So it's very hard for me to say one thing that is that is uh, you know the business All right. reason for Drupal. 8. So so you're relatively uh, early in your Drupal journey. Yes. You've you've used it. You've gotten familiar with it. You're doing business with it. Right. You've um, now gotten far enough that you're going to contribute. And thank you. Yeah. Because that's really really great. As a business person, where do you think you're going to derive um, the real benefits and values okay. from Drupal? Oh, okay, that's an easier question. Um, uh, what we see in the silo-based uh, e-commerce world, if you will, so you know, Magento or Presta or, in our case, Oxid and OS Commerce XT and so forth, um, is, uh, yes, you can build fantastic uh, web shops, um, but to build an a, a, a e-commerce experience, that's if, you like, if you like, where it's a combination of blogs and newsletters and, and content and uh, shopping, um, these silo systems find it very challenging uh, to offer the uh, developer um, a, uh, a good way of, of realizing customer requirements in, the, in an easy fashion. So for us something like Drupal plus Drupal Commerce or Drupal plus REST interface into other things offers a tremendously wider range of options. Um, so uh, I can see us migrating a lot more of what we do into Drupal. Um, that's on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, we're also thinking of expanding our, what you might call, pure Drupal business. Um, uh, we see, uh, you know, talking to people here, the issue is where can I find my next employee, not where can I find my next customer. So that seems to indicate there's a lot of business out there, or potential business out there. Um, and uh, if we are going to be doing more work in Drupal, then um, it would seem sensible that we also open up the type of business that we do in Drupal to be broader than just e-commerce integration kind of things. Oh, yeah. Sounds like an exciting, exciting future. Yeah. Um, and as you were saying, as a Symphony developer, yeah. looking the, the internals of Drupal 8 are actually quite familiar to you. Right. So you, I. I 
believe that the potential hiring pool for a Drupal agency now is is growing a lot? I think um, certainly you could say that uh, it broadens the uh, interest. If, if I was a young programmer looking for a job and I saw that the agency was doing Drupal, um, with Drupal 8, it makes it a lot more attractive to me uh, because I would know that it's not just the Drupal way that I'd be working on, it's you know Symfony and that for me as an engineer uh, is much better. Uh, so it offers me in the future a much wider range of things I can do because I can say I worked on Drupal and Symfony and um, so I think it's a, it's a much more attractive proposition. Yeah. Chris, you've been on both sides of the fence, working in the proprietary world, now using a lot of open source software and doing integrations between the two. Right. Can you compare and contrast the two worlds and as a business person? Um, I think that there are advantages on both sides. Um, I would say the um, differences have got less recently. One of the differences that one could have said a few years ago would be that the development uh, experience as an engineer working in .NET and the Visual Framework was very good back then. And it's only relatively recently that the open source, with the supported tools like PHP Storm, have got to the point where as an engineer it's roughly the same. So that's one, one thing that used to be different, perhaps isn't so different. Um, I think that uh, the, um, in the closed source world uh, uh, you could rely a lot, at least you had the feeling that you could rely on the vendor. Um, it might have taken him a long time to produce something new or to fix something, but more or less, if there was an issue, the vendor you, you know, the vendor was responsible for fixing it. And in the open source world, the impression I always had was that um, there was no guarantee that things would ever get fixed if there was an issue. Um, but I think, the, the, as particularly with Drupal, as I've engaged with Drupal, I've seen that the level of maturity within the open source community is is, is tremendous, the level of commitment to do things the right way um, and the willingness of people to support you um, in all types of different ways is just amazing. So, um, um, it, you know, it's hard today to see why one would choose to go purely proprietary route. I think it's more a case of uh, customers are, for better or for worse, locked into whatever proprietary thing they have. Often in the core of their business they have an ERP system or whatever it might be. Very difficult for them, or virtually impossible for them to move. So it's more a case of how do I bring the power of open source, the, 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 the capabilities, the modern way of working with the web, and marry that to these old systems. And I think more and more we're going to see um, business is going to move in that direction. Um, I think uh, I think there's pluses and minuses on both sides of the of proprietary and uh, and open source, but I think the differences are much less than they used to be. There are uh, quite a lot of people now talking about a renaissance in PHP. Okay. And Drupal um, has been for a couple of years through the Drupal eight cycle really. Uh, been working under this motto of we have to get off our island, we have to stop being an idiomatic uh, encapsulated PHP world right. and so Drupal 8 has brought on a radically a radical new architecture, object, object oriented code, uh, symphony components, guzzle components, lots of JS libraries, right. so all of a sudden we're integrating all sorts of uh, other PHP communities and, 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 and PHP people across all sorts of projects are are really talking and are really excited about being in PHP. What are your thoughts about this marriage of technologies and this this, this broadening sort of community within PHP? Mm. Um, I see it as, um, okay, well first off I'm probably close on 20 years older than most of the people here, so I have maybe a longer perspective. Um, and uh, my perspective is that um, uh, the degree of, of uh, maturity from many perspectives is a lot higher than it was five years ago. I mean, PHP as a language is, is still very young, quite honestly. Uh, and um, it's taken this long, which really isn't that long. So let's say it's taken ten, the last 10 years to get to a, let's call it, professional level of maturity in, in all aspects. So there are high-quality libraries out there in the form of Symfony and Guzzle and 
And there's you know things like JavaScript, for example, have come on tremendously in the last two or three years. Node.js and and and, uh, and Amber and all of those things, very exciting. So it means as a uh, developer um, or as a as a business working in the web, there's a lot more uh, high quality ways of getting to a solution. Um, so uh, and this renaissance in PHP, I see more as a as a, a life cycle, the way uh, something started off as a hobby, it became interesting, people did great things with it, it became uncontrolled, and then over a, a period of time people decided, well, we need to do things in a more structured way. So that's, that's how I see it. Terrific. Um, Chris Jolly, CTO, OnTrack Europe, give us your shameless plug. Okay, thanks. Uh, so OnTrack is a agency based in Augsburg. Um, and our biggest skill is to integrate with legacy systems. So any old ERP system, any legacy internal corporation system, there's lots of great information, business logic in those systems just dying to get out onto the web. And what we do is marry modern web technology with these old legacy systems. So that's, that's our skill set. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk Thank to me. It's you. great it's to great. see you again. Thank I'm really, um, actually really personally excited that uh, this progressed over the course of uh, uh, not quite a year from right. I'm checking this thing out and I wanted to meet you people to I have a Drupal 8 site online and exactly. uh, I'm going to be contributing. That's great. So, so thanks again. It's great to see you. Thank you.